let's make a fine art black and white in ACDC's gemstone. Hi, my name is Alec Watson. I'm a director of photography and I am sitting in the office today working on post-production. I'm editing. ACDC reached out and said, Alec, would you do a tutorial for our new product, Gemstone, which I'm really enjoying and working on. So I said, yeah, absolutely. I am in the process of editing up images to make them look like wall art. It's actually for a commercial project for a company out of Vancouver, Vancouver, BC. They asked me to do some stuff that looks like wall art out of uh, urban images. One of the ways that we can do that, it, it changes the way we see things when we see things in black and white. To get great black and whites that look like fine art, it takes some processing because we have to take the tonality of it and really maximize it. And, and that's the way that the masters did it as well. They, they used dodging and burning. Now, there are all sorts of plugins from different companies for Photoshop that you can get to make great black and whites. And I promise you, I've tried them all. This here is the ACDC RAW Editor. It's built into Gemstone. And the workflow I'm going to show you gives me better results than any plugin I've ever used with Photoshop. So we're going to start with optimizing exposure in RAW here and then move into Gemstone's Layered Editor. Optimizing exposure. What does it mean? How do we do it? Well, if I click on this exclamation mark here, we can see, and, and we already knew, that this is kind of burnt in. This is too white up here. Uh, the greens are crunched blacks. Crunched blacks are actually not that big a problem. But when I was there, the light on this was amazing. And that's because my, my eye can adapt as it goes through. Now, now cameras have a, an ability to capture a huge dynamic range. Uh, our screens at this point can't show it. So one of the things that I can do for a fix is I can pull the highlights down and you'll see the blues start to show up in there. I'm still kind of burnt in here and, and it probably was very white in reality. You can see that pulled this area down. I've got a lot of energy in the shadows, lots of stuff down here. If I take my fill light, I can open up those shadows. There we go. And in a lot of ways, that's more how my eye would have seen it at the time is that I could see the sky and I could see this man and I could see the train, but it was all really punchy. Well, we're going to get to that. What I wanted to do was make sure that all my exposure fit into this histogram. And from there, now you will see that I, there is a black and white section in here. I don't use that. And we can talk about that while we work on, the, on, work on this in Gemstone. Now, the reason I don't use the black and white in the editor is because once I've created a black and white, if I take it into Gemstone and edit, I can never make selections, say, by color. If for some reason I wanted to select this red dress to work on, I can't do it because it won't be red anymore. So I will always, always, when I'm working for a black and white master image, I'll work on color and turn it to black and white, I will actually go in and create an adjustment layer. And here is where I will first off select black and white. It's just an adjustment. And what you'll find is you can see we've got these red, green, and blue sliders. If I open up the red channel, it will make things like the dress lighter. And I could pull down the blue channel and make the sky a little bit darker. It's not really a dramatic way of doing this, but it changes it to black and white and I can still always, because this is not destructive, I can always go back and I can get at my color stuff if I want to later. And maybe I'll do a follow-up on this very image to, to show different ways of selections because this sky is a really tricky one to select, especially in a black and white image. So tonality, the way we're going to work on that is with curves. Now our histogram, all of our image fits in, but it, it looks very flat at the moment. It's not all that interesting. Well, one of the ways that we can change that, and I love this little guy right down here, it is my favorite. I click on that and this is a selection tool. From here, I can select what I want to make brighter. I want to make this train these are clouds reflecting on the front of this train. I'm going to select these clouds 
and it's going to put a dot on my histogram, I'm going to brighten that area up to brighten those clouds. There we go. Sorry, my laptop's a little bit slow because it's recording at the moment. Now you'll notice that it brightened up this sky, which I maybe don't want. I'm going to show you a fix for that too. Now, one thing that I do want to do is make this train all and this area a lot darker. So we're getting, we still got our tool here. Where do I want the dark stuff? Maybe this guy's jacket somewhere in here some of these tones we definitely want to pull down and this will start to make this picture way punchier and rather than just taking uh, a contrast curve and adding contrast I've added contrast on the tones that I'm interested in which were the clouds and this guy's jacket and so this has made these two things start to pop. Well, I mentioned that this area up here kind of blew out. If I turn this on and off, we can see when I turn that off that you know, there's not a lot more detail, but there is a little more detail than when I turn that on and that becomes too bright. So what we can do, we take a paintbrush and I am going to paint black into here where, where those curves are. And if I paint black, what it does, it says, ah, uh, you know what? I don't want this set of curves up in this area. I am going to turn those curves off. And maybe down here where it's really bright as well. There we go. That turned off all that extra brightness. Black and white images are about tonality. They're really about curves, curves, curves. It's all about the curves. So what can we do to make this image stronger? And once I start to look at this image, what if I were to dodge and burn places? Yes, there's dodge and burn tools, but this method is so much more powerful than dodging and burning on the master image because I can go back and I can do, do kind of surgery. If I go, oh, you know what? I made this too dark. I could switch this around and I could paint a little white right there and take it back the other way. There we go, I lightened it up. So what if I wanted to take that sky actually down further? I would make another adjustment layer and I'm just on this adjustment layer, I am just going to be working on uh, the sky in this building. So let's take a dark tone of this building, which is here. I'm going to put a dot in there and let's take a light tone, which is there. And oops, sorry, my my stylus is grabbing these. Let's take that guy and pull him way down. And we see that that building really darkens up at this point. And it's made the rest of my picture kind of no good, right? It's kind of messed that up. And my sky's maybe gone a little bit bright. Let's just take it down a notch to there. And I'm just looking at this building. Now I've got some tonality on this building that I like. Well, the rest of the picture is kind of ruined. So what's our fix for that? we are going to right click on this curve and we're going to invert this mask. That basically turns the mask off. But if I take a paintbrush and now I paint white and we're not going to paint quite as strong. Let's, let's paint it at 50%. Make my brush a little, that's a, a little bit smaller. There we go. I'm just going to brush this building. And now I've got some stronger, darker tones coming into my building, making my building jump out. And maybe through here could do with a little more density. Maybe through there, some more density. That's starting to look a lot more interesting, kind of maybe how my eyes even saw it a little bit, because I could see all these things at the same time. And now when my eye travels through this, I see dark tones and light tones and it's starting to, starting to look a little more interesting. But you know what? This train was a standout. I am gonna show you a trick. Now this is, a, this is an AI one. This may or may not work. We're about to find out. Select subject. Select subject basically looks at your photo and goes, what is this photo about? The AI built in. 
Well, to us, this photo is about the train. It's maybe about this guy down here, but it's really about that, that train as the subject. I can't promise it's going to get this train, but I would say that there is a chance that the AI will know this. If you've got pictures of people, it, it's going to get it right every time or a, a tree in, in a field, you know, things where there's very obviously a subject to, the, to a photo. This one would be pretty advanced. So we're about to find out. Look at that. Smart AI selected the train. Now it, it selected a little bit of the light up here. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how we, how we work with this and why I'm doing this. So I'm going to take this selection and I'm going to refine the selection. Now for, there we go. Now we can see what has been selected. I'm going to soften that edge through feathering just a little bit. There we go. Now you can see it kind of glows and I'm catching my sky up here. I don't want to catch the sky with the selection. So I'm going to shift the edge a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. There we go. Somewhere in there. Now I've got a soft selection of this train. And for this, this is totally going to work. Here's my soft selection of the train. I am going to make yet another curve adjustment. Curves. And it's going to make a curve selection that's totally based on the train. I am going to make the darks darker on just the train. So I'm gonna take these guys way down here right there let's pull that down the train's going to catch up in a second and let's take this guy way up through here now my train has become super contrasty much more contrasty than the rest of the image and at this point that's really starting to jump out as the subject in a much more interesting way to me. So this this is just the train and I can toggle this on and off in my image. You can see when it's the softer gray, it doesn't really jump out the same as it does like that now. I'm gonna make one last change to really make this image pop. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make one more curves layer. And what these curves are, they're really about dodging and burning, which I said, in. In fine art pictures, there is a lot of this done. I'm going to make it take an adjustment. I'm going to make a curve that's just about bringing out this person. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to take this tool. And we're going to make a halo around them. So everything around them is going to become bright. So this area here, I am going to brighten that up. Of course, this is going to do the whole photo, right? There we go. I'm brightening that up. And let's see, where are they? They're pretty dark. I'm gonna darken them down, make them almost a shadow. I'm, again, only looking at the person. Now, my pictures become too contrasty. I've kind of ruined it. We're going to right click on the curves to invert that. Now, no effect. I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna paint at 20% just around my person and everything around them is going to start to get brighter. And this is just adding heavy contrast in this area of the photo. This is a really heavy contrast curve. And if I toggle this on and off, you will notice that, there we go, there's my person when it's kind of gray, and that's with them being heavily backlit. When we started out, it started out as kind of just a, a bit of a gray image, but the final image, it's really starting to pop. In the second version of this, man, I would love to put in some cloud detail, do some compositing here, but as the actual image, if I were just to crop this a little bit tighter, I really think that I am onto something. If we take this up here, and around like that. There we go. A regular looking color image turned into fine art without the use of a, uh, a plugin, just using black and white curve layers to dodge and burn, to turn a somewhat regular photo into a really striking image. And you can use this technique on all sorts of your images.
If you've got any questions about this, leave it in the comments below. I am happy to answer some questions and see if I can help you optimize the way you make fine art photos. Uh, Gemstone is really fantastic at helping to contour curves and in black and white, that is where, that's where you're gonna find the magic. So get out there, take some shots. When you find you've got a, an image that's got great lines to it, but maybe the colors aren't working for you, definitely think about making it a black and white. When you've got great line and you enhance the contrast, that is when you're gonna have magical black and whites. So get out there, take some photos, make the world a better and more beautiful place.